it seems to me, I'll just start with the kind of the assumption, it seems to me that healthy human beings have multiple selves because that's survival beneficial. Okay? Yeah. And then I'll just give you an example or two, which is, um, have you ever argued with yourself? All the time, yeah. <laughs> Who's that other person? Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's simple, right? Have you ever said, I don't know what got into me? Have you ever said, um, you know the way I behaved last night, that just isn't the way I am, but I had, and then you mentioned drugs or alcohol or anger, right? Mm, yeah. I, and one of my favorites is a, a metaphor in English, I was beside myself. Mm. I love that. <laughs> that's a good one, yeah. So that's the notion. And the notion is that if you pay attention to that, it turns out that your life actually becomes more understandable. Because here's the problem we all have. You're in a relationship with your girlfriend. Yeah. And you really know her pretty well. And she's pretty consistent, except when she's not. <laughs> yeah. And she's not consistent. You say, how could you have done that? You know, the last 40 times that you and then this time. And she says, I don't know. OK. And then she says of you, what's the matter with you today? You say, I don't know. Is there anything wrong? I'm still me. And I said, no, no, you're really behaving in a way that's very, very different. And if you think about it, we all, uh, if you go home to your parents, you change. Okay. Now, what you don't know is they change. Mm. <laughs> because... Um, and I had this, this really brought home to me. I was, I don't know, 50. I go home, I visit my mother. Now, this is Florida, um, kind of, you know, warm, humid. And we're going out, and she says, uh, don't you think you should put on a sweater? Okay. And I think, I'm 50. I've actually, oh, you know, I'm in here. She's in that body. And I know her circulation actually isn't that good. And I about to, you know, nail her. <laughs> and then I get that, you know, that's my mom. Mm. <laughs> but it's but it's irritating and it's demeaning. And I and I say to my stepfather, this is a not nice part of me. How do you live with her? Mm. <laughs> and he says, she's only like that when you're around. Wow. And I suddenly got that I, of course, become much, you know, because when you're a parent, now that I have children, um, when you're a parent, when you see your child, they see themselves in the presence. But you see behind them all these in terms of that. There's that little four year old girl who says, Daddy, I didn't know that was a bad word. <laughs> <laughs> this when my child at age four says to me something like, Well, don't be a motherfucker. <laughs> That, what? <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> but so, so we see selves behind, you know, just younger selves. So we, we behave differently with our parents than they do with us, so to speak. Yeah. And if you think about it, um, usually if creative people are much better at understanding this, which is I get into the space in which I can write poems. Hmm. And if not in that space, I can't. Or... I have to do my taxes. Most of me hates math, but I have to kind of put that aside and just be the little math scribbler and get out the receipts. And the, and I do that. And I say, oh, gee, that, was, that wasn't as bad because the part of you that did it was the one best equipped to do it. And yes. so the phrase, the phrase that, that I've used for mental health is being in the right self at the right time. Mm. Yeah. Which is, because imagine... You, you come home and you are the self that visits your parents. And there's your girlfriend. Okay? You think, I wouldn't have sex with anybody. <laughs> <laughs> and she thinks, what's going on? <laughs> okay? Because you, you put the wrong self at the wrong time. And if you've ever had the feeling where two of your parts of your life come to you at the same time, you know, you're suddenly there's a surprise visit from a parent and a girlfriend that you're having trouble with. 
Mm. And you feel that, quote, I was torn apart. Okay? Wow. See, all these selves reacting. And what we've done, we actually have a book at the moment in press called Healthy Selves, Who You Are and Why You Don't Know It. And why you don't know it is we all were brought up to say, there's only one self. The monotheism is only one self. And people who have more than one self are really crazy sick people. Mm. Think about it. See, when I took abnormal psychology and you say, well, why would I want to be interested in all these weird sick things? And they say, well, all of the things we're talking about are kind of extreme versions of normal behavior. Mm. Except multiplicity. That's different. That's just weird. And then, well, you don't get to write the rules that way. Mm. And so extreme multiplicity is fascinating. And I'll give you an example that, that very early on blew me away. This is someone who is in a hospital, so they're under observation, and they have, quote, multiple personalities. And one of the personalities is called uh, Timmy, and Timmy's about 11. And Timmy likes orange juice. And when Timmy drinks orange juice, he's very happy. But the other personalities in the same body are allergic to orange juice. So as long as Timmy is, quote, in control, the person we're talking to, there's no problem. But if one of the other personalities takes over and the other is older, there are hives that appear on the body. Hmm. I Meaning a strong, strong allergic reaction to the orange juice. And if Timmy returns to being the, the person that everyone is talking to, the hives go away. Okay? I mean, that to me is farther out than the Dalai Lama story. Okay? Yeah, wow. Yeah. Okay, so what it says is that in different personalities, you can physically be somewhat different. And we have um, both EEG records of people who, whose EEGs in different moods, so to speak, different selves, are as different as different individuals. And there's also a wonderful way of, of, of for, for people who are strong multiples, they have more than one eyeglass prescription. Wow. Okay. That's crazy, yeah. Okay, so those are extremes which make it a little easier. But if you look at us and you say, um, hmm, somebody's coming over to the house that my girlfriend invited. I hate it. But that's really not going to make a good evening. No. No. So I'm just going to be, and then you turn out to be pretty nice. And, and you know, kind of, you remember that he's awful and hateful. But his nice part and your nice part can manage for the evening. Because you can turn, you can you can move into a different self, and it, and see different self. It's still you because memory is is retained across selves. Mm. Ex extremely ill people, memory is not shared, and that's what we call disturbed multiplicity. Right. Yeah. Well, it's true. Even like you know, my, when I'm hungry and I haven't eaten, my girlfriend would be like, "You're mean." Like you know, I'm just like angry and just less tolerance for people and. Yeah, and it's just funny how, like, you know, we do have all the different personality cells and a lot of us just kind of reject certain parts of ourselves. But I've, after, especially after certain psychedelic experiences, I've just had to learn to at least try to, to, play, to be at peace and integrate those different cells. And uh, sometimes you have complete counter-opposite personalities. You know, you have your nurturing, loving side and then your other personality might be, like, really mean and aggressive. And But that's useful in certain situations, you know, so... Certain situations, if you're not mean and aggressive, you might get the crap beat out of you. Exactly, exactly. You have to stand your ground sometimes, you know. So, and that's when it's useful to cultivate that aggressive nature of right. yourself. Yeah. Right. So that it isn't that we all have an inner warrior, but it would be nice if we did when we need it. Yes, exactly. And I would love so, to. Oh, sorry. Continue. So, what we found is people who get it. The two things happen. One is you're kinder to yourself because hmm. you say it, you don't you no longer say I don't know what got into me. You say the, the the me that did that has some needs that really looks like they need they need to be dealt with. Yes, 
it's funny because my girlfriend literally speaks like that now ever since her it's like oh that you sent i'm sorry excuse that you sent yeah she was just upset <laughs> that's what, her name's you sent yeah so i remember uh, a friend of mine who, who said that she had this wonderful feeling when she was with a guy she liked except when they would start to get too intimate she'd close down hmm. so what she realized is one of her selves was really a young child and a young child doesn't like that so what she learned to do is bring to her sexual bed a little teddy bear so the little yeah. child part the teddy bear and she got to be with this guy so she was she was aware that these selves need um, if you lock if you kind of say well there's a part of me that's so bad I don't want to talk about it that part will hurt you yes because yeah because you've basically been hurting it and I, I just very moving to an MDMA um, session and it was a vet with post-traumatic stress disorder and he was um, maps was, was one of their people and as you get over the hours he moves from uh, discovering the part of himself that's so angry and so also suicidal and drinks to realizing that it's in a cage realizing that he another part of him has put it in a cage and that it's just it should be angry and he befriends that part and that part befriends him and you see this all unfolding mm. where these selves begin to have a different relationship because they both can see each other wow so this is really what we found is people who who begin to think in selves are not only nicer to themselves, they're nicer to other people because, you know, there you have, gee, I've known this guy for eight years and and we went out to dinner and I, I realized he cheated me. I'm not going to ever spend any time with that fucker. And he, wait a moment, wait a moment. Yes, part of him turned out to be a cheat. <laughs> but most of them isn't, you know. <laughs> exactly. You can't just label your whole entire being because one small self did a certain act, yeah. I mean, see, that's what happens. Once you get that you're a multiplicity, exactly, you behave differently to other people. Uh, mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that you don't, you know, you still dislike things that make you upset or that are terrible. But you don't necessarily think that's the whole being. Hmm. So that when someone, um, usually someone famous, I mean, we've had this thing in the States where we have various uh, right-wing Christian ministers who preach uh, unbelievably rigid goodness turn out to be um, not only gay and they've been against homosexuality, but they've, while, you know, after they come off stage telling everyone else to behave, they make it with their masseuse, right? And then they get drunk and... And so forth. So they have a part that's really as deviant as their other side is deviant in the kind of right wing righteous way. Yes, exactly. And, and the the conventional way is say, well, what are what hypocrites? And the answer is no. But they haven't worked out a way of harmonizing their differences, so they became more extreme. They became in a right. both both sides are kind of desperate. So that's what we've done. So reject, a, yeah. So they're like rejecting one side and overly attaching themselves to this one particular persona. I've noticed even that, like even just in the spiritual community, even with myself, it happened for a little bit when I first had a an ayahuasca experience, and then I started getting more into spirituality and I should meditate and I should do all these things that make me a better person. But then I started rejecting other sides of myself, and of course, it just ended up coming out in ugly ways. And now I'm just at peace. Like, yeah, I've got a deviant side. I've got an aggressive side. I've got a side that likes to party, I've got a side that, you know, likes to just mess around, you know, it doesn't always have to be. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, um, and that, that, and that everyone in that room where your girlfriend, many other people, all those people have some needs. Yeah. And if, if you don't, I mean, I know, for example, and this podcast is part of it. Um, I like this. Okay. <laughs> this is, I think this is a good use of me. You know, I'm full, I got a lot of stories, I, I move my hands, even though I'm not Italian, and so forth. <laughs> and if I, if I do this, or if I teach a class, or if I go to a conference, once in a while, not too often, a part of me is nourished. 
And if I do it too often, it's not nourishing because I don't need it that much. But it's 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 a the feeling of being well used is a wonderful feeling. Um, but it's like a really good meal. Mm. And it's like as I say to people, imagine you having your favorite dessert for ten days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you get over it. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's not my favorite dessert. Yeah. I mean, we, so the parts, different parts of us need nourished. And what we've done with this book, this is not a self-help book. I did one of those. Okay. okay. <laughs> this is a pay attention and look around book, and you will change without noticing because wow. you'll begin to see multiplicity everywhere. Okay. And if you think of it, you said, like the superhero movies. Yeah, they're I love all. It. I love it. Yeah. All people say. I'm I'm kind of a, a smart ass asshole, but when I'm a superhero, <laughs> you know, then I behave really pretty well. Yeah. Usually, uh, and that's that's kind of playing out multiplicity at a kind of silly, you know, grand scale. But it's also saying that there's a part of us. See, there's there's the story, and I've seen it happen, where the mother sees the child, and the child is in the street, and the car is where the brake is slipped, is slowly rolling over the child, okay? And the mother runs out, picks up the car, grabs the child, and puts it down. Hmm. And then one of our tabloids shows up and says, we heard about this, and it would really be terrific if you could do that for us. And pick up the car, and, and she says, are you kidding? Do you know what that car weighs? I'm a 102-pound housewife. I can't pick up that car. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. And we have lots of those stories. Yeah, I've heard of I have heard a lot of those situations, yeah. That's great. Is um just cuz I was just watching um a, a talk of yours you are talking about the different cells and something that came up when you were talking about when people get drunk and it's like yeah. uh you said something about how psychotherapy is like the lo has the lowest success rate for people yeah. who are alcohol who are alcoholics and also that going to Therapy for alcohol is almost like your neighbor being a drunk and then you're going to therapy for that guy, you know? I'm saying it's the, the, the drunk. So you, you get drunk and you have a wonderful time and you break a bottle over somebody's shoulder and, <laughs> and you know, and they carry you home and you're singing, okay? <laughs> and then the next morning, you have a hangover. You feel dreadful. Your stomach hurts you, you know. And the problem is the drunk doesn't feel the hangover and then the hangover person feels so bad about it he goes to therapy and the drunk doesn't go to therapy and it doesn't work and so psychotherapy has like a two percent success rate hmm. now if you go to an aa meeting aa has a brilliance and they're just they're wonderful meetings because they've worked it out to make sure that the alcoholic self comes to the meeting hmm. You go to an AA meeting, it's mainly stories. And you and what's wonderful, the system is really brilliant, is you you've been there a while and you're still drinking, and you say, you know, I'm drinking, and then you have this incredibly hard life story, and it totally justifies why you drink. And then somebody else in the room who's been dry like five years has a story that's way worse than yours. Just way worse. <laughs> And they stopped drinking and their story didn't get better, okay? <laughs> but they stopped. So the alcohol person, the person who's drinking, is with other people who really know who they are and are saying, you need to not be that self. Mm.